What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric Sheets, Abra. We're going to be talking through the NFL Week 12 slate, the Sunday slate. We did a video already for the Thanksgiving slate in case you guys see this one early. But this is going to be covering the 11 gamer on Sunday with a bunch of uh, not great real life football games, I would say, which is sort of the theme of this year. I can't really find that many games that are all that interesting. <laughs> um, so we're going to have probably some some quick run throughs uh, that we're not going to be all that into on this slate because there are some games that are just just feel like complete duds, um, to be honest. So, Sheets, any overall thoughts before we jump into game by game? Yeah, there are a couple of possible running back values that we're going to have to deal with, um, and we'll get to them uh, pretty quickly, actually, on the slate. And I agree with you overall. There, I only have you know, kind of like macro interest in like two games, like maybe three. Um, so, which means that probably where the ownership will end up going, which means that other other teams could uh, – could show out boy the one game that i'm interested in has a much lower total than i thought it was gonna have wow that, we'll, we'll get there okay we'll get i have a feeling which one it is so let me I'll, I'll, when it's when i think it's the one i'll, I'll let you know which uh where it is okay. so, uh, all right let's think it's, so let's start with denver carolina you think it's this game i i'm sure it's not this game <laughs> it is not this i don't game. think anyone could considering the fact that denver averages 14 points a game it's really hard for me to assume that uh that we're gonna yeah, have I think the total the total there is like 36. Um yeah. so however I, I'm currently and again I'm I i did not even run all my sheets, but the couple of models I'm looking at has Latavius Murray as a really, really strong player this week. Um so it's something that we're gonna have to monitor. And it was funny when 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 they picked him up, I thought they got him as I, I thought it was a really, really good pickup. He was very he had a really, really nice game on a, either it was a Thursday or Sunday night game with whatever team he was on before, whether it was, I forget what he was on, Raiders or whatever team he was on before. Um, and I thought, but Denver picked him up after losing whatever, Don, not Don Trump Williams, whatever, the, 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 good, the good running back. Um, I, thought it was, I thought it was sharp to pick him up. And um, he had a good game this past week. He had like 17 rushes or something like that. And I think Gordon, did he get hurt? No, uh, wait, we went unclaimed on. Waivers. Oh, no, he's gone. He oh, left. He oh, left. He's gone. Oh, so he this literally tweeted out. He so he this is why you, okay. you fans have been a nightmare. Um, oh, so this is why. Okay, let's leave so, with so, a smile on our face. So, this is why. So, yeah. so Latavius Murray is going to be one of the one of the two big values on the slate. We'll get to the other one soon. Um, and I think he's, I think he's a really, really good play. Um, the, listen, the matchup's not great. I mean, Carolina can stop people. But I think Latavius Murray does run with energy, um, and I, I I actually like him. I don't, I don't know what else they're going to do. I mean, like Marlon Mack. I mean, he's the only guy that's on not on injured reserve that I've heard of. The D D O Z O I mean, it's going to be all Latavius Murray. I mean, I, at five K, uh, I'm 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 in I'm in on that. Uh, anything else in this game? I don't have it as a particularly good game, so. Uh, I don't want to stack it or anything like that. And as far as the wide receivers go, not. I thought I might get to DJ Moore because I always get to DJ Moore, but I' not really getting there right now. Early, Cortland Sutton looks like a good play, um, but for me, it's it's. A, we'll start. We'll start with the Tavius Murray. Yeah, uh, oddly enough, for a game that uh, has this low of a total, I think there's a lot of plays in it just because the prices. Um, Lat Murray. Uh, DJ Moore, but why is Latavius Murray that much better of a play than Deontay Foreman? Someone's going to have to explain that to me. These are probably two of the best defenses in football without an offenses. Um, but Dulcich, then Sutton, in that order, uh, that's the guys I'm interested in. So I, I will have some Murray. I will have some more because we've got Sam Darnold starting. We actually have a guy who might be a real quarterback. Um, I'm very excited to, to see what happens to this uh, Carolina team without having to deal with Baker anymore and PJ Walker. So I, I actually think Carolina's passing game is more in play than usual. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to Terrence Marshall, but he is a potential value. I think this game has, has some pieces that you want, but certainly not a game you're looking to stack by any means. All right. Um, what do you got next? It's uh, Baltimore. Baltimore yeah, that could be fun. Go ahead. Sheets. What do you think about this one? Yeah, this was the one I was, I was getting to. Um, in that, I, I, I guess it's because it's like later in the season, all these totals come down. It just seems really low at 42. Um, maybe I just like misinterpret like the way these teams play, I suppose, because I, I just thought that Jacksonville was a team that liked to play fast. They go no huddle, and Baltimore always seems to 
want to play fast? I, I don't know. Uh, this this was one of my only like a handful of games that I really considered stacking. If you want to know the truth, um, mm-hmm. so I'll start with this one. I'll start with uh, Trevor Lawrence to to Christian Kirk and maybe Jay Jones and and Etienne also. And this would be and 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 Andrews might be healthy this week finally. I mean he was he played last week, but he was whatever. And you can play Andrews on the Baltimore side. And this could actually be you might finally get me to do this is to play like Lamar by himself with like running back with Jackson, Jacksonville guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, I don't know. I think Trevor Lawrence himself has some rushing upside, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I, I definitely on, on a slate with, with some really crappy games. I think this one is, I don't know. I, I, I like this game. Yeah. I, I'm sort of with you here. And I would include, if you're going to play some of this game, I, I don't think there's anything wrong going back to Demarcus Robinson. It, it might feel chasey, but you don't have other true receivers on their team. And while we're used to him as the fifth receiver in KC, he had nine catches last week for 100 yards, 128 yards. Um, he had two weeks previous, prior, he had six catches and eight targets. Um, I would include him into the mix. And uh, I sort of have a, a little bit of a similar inclination as, as you. It feels like a lower total. We did see Baltimore not be able to do anything, but that's, I mean, I'm telling you, they're going to have some bad days, but that that Carolina defense that he faced last week, that's a really good defense that just has no offense. Otherwise, that team would be much – I mean, they, they they would be legit. But I, I like the idea of, 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 like you said, I'm I'm much less interested in taking the, the the Lawrence side because I just think Lamar could could get 40. <laughs> like, um, But I do have some interest in it, and I think that Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, and maybe the first week that Marvin Jones hasn't gotten to play on Thanksgiving because he's usually my Thanksgiving guy and we're recording this the day before Thanksgiving. Maybe this is the week where he uh, he wins me all the money because I'm going to throw him into a lineup or two just just because of old time's sake. Um, uh, Travis Etienne also, if you're not going to play the uh, the passing game, I think that's I think that's interesting. And I think that Evan Ingram. So I, I like this game as a stack. I think you got a lot of pieces and you play Lamar with either Andrews or, or Duvernay. And that that seems perfectly logical to me. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm with you on this one. Okay. All right. What do you got next? You got the uh, well, now you have my, now you have the Miami offense, which is going to be which is going to be the, the 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 highest on passing attack, I I guess. Um, you know, Houston can't stop anybody, whether it be by ground or um, in the air, and, and Miami is like uh, they're a wrecking machine. You know what I mean? So so they're they're going to be uh they I presume they're going to project well. I presume they're going to be popular and and. Uh, with with Latavius Murray and the other value that you could play, I mean, you could you could play lineups with both with both Miami receivers pretty easily if you want to know the truth this week. So um, it's going to be a decision, like whether you want to eat that or not. There's certainly some blowout risk if that means anything. Uh, and if you want to run it back with Houston, uh, I you know the, the 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 logical one is going to be Brandon Cooks, but you could try Nico Collins. And this was an interesting pickup. Uh, Okay, so he's not going to play this week, the Eno Benjamin. So this is one uh, – you get another shot at Damian Pierce coming off of it, like obviously just a, a hateful performance. You know what I mean? Like for the people who played him. But um, uh, I would go back to him, if you want to know the truth. So uh, I like the Miami side, obviously. I run it back with either uh, uh, Collins or Cooks or – Damian Pierce. I think Damian Pierce is uh is uh is still kind of the bell cow over there. So I would uh and he's young, right? Like you say this all the time. Just one bad game, you're gonna like write him off. Listen, Washington was Washington was tough, man. You know, that's two, two weeks in a row. Washington's been tough. So I'll give uh I'll give Pierce a pass on that one. So uh obviously the Miami guys make sense, and Pierce would be, I guess, my favorite Houston guy. Yeah, um this is another like it's it's a weird game. I mean, it's it's hard to want to stack a game after seeing a team. I think that they had three yards in the first half, the Texans last week, yep. and it's going to be tough for them, um, uh, especially with Kyle Allen at quarterback. So Collins or Cooks, their prices make me want to play them. Uh, the situation doesn't necessarily. I mean, they're going to have to throw the ball, I guess. Damian Pierce, uh, or does Bur- Burkhead end up getting the the pass? I don't know. I I, I think Damian Pierce is, is fine. So one of Pierce, Cooks, and Collins. Um, I do like Jeff Wilson and Tyreek Hill. It is yeah. interesting to me that Jeff Wilson just sort of took the running back role, but did he really 
or was it more just he was having a good game and they because they because most of it was playing well too I, I don't really understand what's happening with their running game I, I love it for them for in a real life standpoint but I don't I don't think it's like the best for fantasy because Mostert or Wilson, I feel like one of those two guys could get there and everybody's going to be on Wilson. And I think it could just as easily be Mostert. Um, so I think you're, I think both the running backs in this game and then the receivers on both sides are are firmly in play. Um, large field stuff, uh, Trent Sherfield as a value. That's my my uh, home run hitting long large field stuff. That's pretty much it. So here's the next uh, bet value of the week. Um Presuming that Joe Mixon is out, uh, you're going to get uh, last week's hero that nobody played because nobody believed he existed anymore. It was Samaj P. Rai. Uh, what do you get? Three touchdowns, something like that. Yep. Uh, so he's uh, he's only 5K um, and, oh, excuse me, 5,600. He's going to project as a kind of a smash play and uh, it's a decision you're going to have to make. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any other options. Uh, I got to see who Chris Evans. I don't know if he even exists. I, mean, I don't, I'd have to do a little more work on this, but um, it looks Who's like. Kareem, oh, the running back. Oh. I'm just looking literally at the running Mixon, back. For what it's worth, I think, I think Mixon plays for what it's worth. Oh, really? I mean, he's oh. projected to play as of right now. He's probable. Oh, okay. Because well, the projection I'm looking at has Piran like kind of smashing. So we'll, uh, oh, interesting. we'll look at it. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, listen, if he plays, then it's, then it's something different. If you. He doesn't play. I think P. Ryan's going to look like a great player. Um, if he plays, um, look, Tennessee is tough, right? They have a good defense. They're just really good at football. They're, they're good at football. They're really, really well coached. But I will say that on a slate that kind of stinks, I mean, I would, I would consider going right back to the Cincinnati offense. I um, totally agree. You know, so uh, that, that that's that's kind of where I'm leaning is 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 go right back to T. Higgins, right back to Burrow. Um, we don't get a chase back yet, right? I he's not. questionable, and he's like they're doing that half projection thing for him, you know, uh, which is he ridiculous. Projected for seven fantasy points, which is ridiculous because he. Oh, there it is. They expect him to play. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like this is. I'm into let, it. We'll, let's go, and, and 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 you can you listen. You can run it back with Henry. Feel free. Uh, totally makes sense to me. Uh, I think that Henry could probably have a really good game against Cincinnati. Um, so yeah, let's go right back to that. And uh, you know what? Th- that's a, if Mixon doesn't play, and and P Ryan does become pretty chalky, then I just won't play him, and I'll just play the receivers <laughs> for Cincinnati. Uh, and we'll and we'll do it that way. But uh, yeah, I'm, I can't, I didn't even think about this, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of into this idea. Yeah, I want all pieces of the as always. Whenever the things get a little shaky and it's a slate, we don't we don't have obvious things to do. I'm always going to fall in love with Cincinnati. I feel like every total that they're in is too low. Um, I understand that Tennessee will try to ground the ball, but they also have the ability to throw the ball now because uh, Traylon Burks might be my favorite play on the slate. Um, I I love this kid. Um, I've, I've been saying that I just wait for him to get involved. He finally had the big game against green Bay at seven catches for 111 yards. Um, on a Thursday, I think this is where Traylon Burks, this guy's talented, man. Um, it feels really weird to play pass catchers for, for, for Tennessee, but every week, I mean, Traylon Burks, the week before was Westbrook Kine. Somebody gets there because if you stack the box enough, they're well coached and they will play action you to death. So I'm, I'm very much into to playing the Burks. I think you could even run Burks and Henry on the other side if you wanted to play a Burrow Chase Higgins or a Burrow Chase Hurst kind of a stack. I'm very into the game. Um, I'll also have exposure to who's ever running the ball for the Bengals. The truth is the way you beat the Titans is through the air. So mostly it's going to be the passing game for me. And and then you bring back Henry with maybe Traylon Burks on the other side. And by the way, I wouldn't even cross Robert Woods off because I like this game. And Robert Woods also had his, you know, seven targets each of the last two games. Um, so I, I'm, I'm into this as a stack. I, again, I'm going to, I always feel comfortable dying on the Bengal Hill. You know what I mean? If it doesn't work out that specific day, that's fine with me. I love these Bengals, um, in terms of fantasy stuff and on both sides, you can, as we saw Pittsburgh do, you can get point, you can score on them as well. So, uh, I'm, I'm very interested in this game. The only fear I have of it is that you end up getting Dontrell Hilliard 
uh, in like, you know, and, and on third quarter, it just, it just, just, I just feel like if they're down multiple scores, if, 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 if Cincinnati does click offensively, I just feel like maybe Henry gets taken a little bit out, um, out of the game. But I, but overall, this is definitely of the games we've talked about by far my favorite so far. All right. What do you got? Uh, next? So Jets? I have Jets, Chicago, Jets are at home. And let me tell you something, this freaking coach is an asshole. All right. He's saying uh, all, all things are up, in, up, up, up around the table for, for, for quarterback. Listen, you, you, you start to believe your own bullshit when you were like six and two with the jets. I mean, not realizing how, how, how well you ran. Okay. They're a 500 team. Okay. They're they're but they're better. You know, and they're, they're, they're improving. This is their freaking future and coming off of who was they beat Buffalo. Right. And then because he had a bad game in new England, like the entire civilized world does. Okay. Everybody hates just, Zach Wilson more than I've ever heard. I, it's crazy. It's amazing. It's just amazing. And and uh, well, everything's on the table. Okay, you freaking idiot. Um, that, that's the way to inspire confidence in your in your in, your, in the, basically. You know, he's got probably a better chance of being there in five years than you do, Coach. You know what I mean? So 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 let's uh let's call it what it is. Um, anyway, uh, Garrett Wilson at forty three hundred is is dirt cheap, um, and. He's gonna. I I think he's gonna be really popular. Um, it's not the greatest total in the world, obviously, but it's just it's just forty three hundred. Bears, let's let's go. I'm with you. Yeah, so it's forty three hundred. Um, and then um, on Chicago, I see Justin Fields is questionable, and he's lit. Wait, he'll be limited on Wednesday. Oh my God, he's not considered for injured reserve. But he's day to day. Okay, I mean, well, we'll we'll keep we'll obviously keep an eye on that. But if in fact he's out, I mean, I think the whole Bears team is not is not playable. You know what I mean? Um, or maybe not. Wait a minute. So if he's out, Montgomery, maybe Montgomery. Yeah, and, and he takes all those just all those rushes. So mm-hmm. we'll keep an eye on that. Um, and so I don't know if I want to go stacking the Jets or anything like that, but. I definitely think that Garrett Wilson uh, looks like a very, very strong chalky one off. Yeah, I think this is another game that on this kind of a slate is actually stackable. Um, if if oh, let's go. Okay. If, if you have if Justin Fields plays, I have no idea what people are doing. Not not at least making him one of your priorities. Uh, the upside is simply too high. Uh, the Jets defense is solid. It, I don't know that it matters all that much. I mean, he put up forty four against the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, um, right. Right. So, like, you mix in the Mooney Comet thing again at no ownership. Give it to me. I'll take it all. Like, I, I don't, you know, this is a great spot to attack low. I feel like you also have the natural runbacks and Wilson and uh, Garrett Wilson, as you mentioned. Um, I would include Tyler Conklin in the mix, especially with a new quarterback, which I think it's going to be. It's going to probably be Mike White. Um, I, if I was me, I would, and you want to make the playoffs, I would probably use Flacco, to be honest with you. And both running backs, I'm not going to play them, but they will probably sneak into – maybe they'll sneak into a millionaire maker lineup or so. Um, just because the Bears' defense has been bad, Carter or Robinson. But but why does it have to be Carter? They got James Robinson thinking that he's going to take over, and he really hasn't. You know what I mean? It's uh, So it's kind of frustrating a little bit. I, I don't know what to do with the running backs, but I just feel like I want I want exposure to this game. I have this as another one of my games. I've, I've got more games than I thought I was going to have already. Um this one I would rank number three behind the Bengals, Tennessee, and Baltimore, Jacksonville. But I'm I'm on board, and I'm on board with taking the the fringy receivers too. I'll I'll play I'll play Elijah Moore in a couple lineups with a new quarterback. Anybody with a new quarterback and who's a talent who's talented, I'll give it a shot. Um, Chase Claypool I would include in the mix at 3,900. You have you could do a really cheap stack, and I, I know it's gross. Like some of these plays sound gross, but if Justin Fields plays, playing him with any of the receivers, which will be unowned, Mooney Mooney's number one priority. Komet would be number two for me. Um, but you run it back with Wilson, possibly somebody else, maybe maybe Conklin. Um, feels weird then you're asking for too much from the passing game, but they're so cheap. There's just a lot you could do with this game. And I think this is a, a too low a total. It's supposed to be pretty rainy. Uh, you're in New York. Um, so maybe we need to wait for Sunday for Mrs. Sheets' forecast or something. But I actually didn't hear that. I heard it was supposed to be actually pretty balmy this weekend. Um, oh, okay. Well, you know, and, if, and rain doesn't bother me. It's just the wind that bothers me. So. 
Um, I'm, I'm, and, and by the way, if Justin Fields, I mean, I don't care how good your defense is. He, he's a guy who can put up a huge number against anyone. Almost like the better your defense is, the more fantasy points you're going to score. Yeah, it does feel like that, right? I mean, okay. like we just said, like the Cowboys one is a great example. I mean, it's just. Well, it's that's crazy. what happens. You turn it into chaos and then he like, like escapes the pocket. And then next thing you know, he has 150 rushing yards. Like exactly. That. Exactly. Um, um my bad. Mean? I skipped, my bad. I skipped the game. Okay. Um, so t- Tampa Bay, I, Cleveland. Yes. Um, maybe that's, uh, maybe that would have, would have been a good thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, I it seems like I haven't seen Tampa play in a while, but I guess they were, were they in Munich? Were they, were they, I don't know where they where they've been. They've been just kind of like trending towards nine and seven. I they think. were in Munich. Yeah. They had a, they played well, right? Um, Five, well, so, so, yeah, well enough to win, I guess. Yeah. So they're trending towards nine and seven and losing the first round of the wild card, I guess. Um, uh, I don't imagine having much here. Um, I mean, Evans, they're just not showing up. I don't know what to tell you. Cleveland, I would, would you go back to any of these Cleveland guys? Go back to maybe Donovan Peoples-Jones, my hero, or my non-hero at 4,800. Cooper obviously had a really, really big game. Um, maybe, 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 maybe let's play Cleveland again. I don't know. I haven't. I didn't really give this a lot of thought, but I guess when you just read the names off, it seems like you'd want to do this, right? Like Brissett, Cooper, Peoples Jones, uh, Evans, Godwin. Uh, I don't want to. I'll tell you, I don't want to. I don't want to play Fournette. Uh, he's actually showing up as a decent play, but I just got. I I, I have better things to do than play. Uh, yeah, we're totally on opposite ends there. The thing that scares me is oh, Rashad nice. White ran for 105 yards uh, against Seattle. Um, Fournette r- ran the ball 14 times in that game. So they ran the ball a ton, but for some reason, Fournette not getting the bulk of the work is a little worrisome. This is the best matchup in football for running backs. Oh, I am okay. not going to ignore it. So it's a Tampa Bay running back for me. That's that's sort of what I'm just writing down. But if they're going to split, then I I might skip it. But yeah, it feels like a spot where you should probably should probably have a little bit of interest. On the other side, um, and by the way, I'll throw in you know I think Godwin and Evans are fine. I think Julio Jones is a good spend down. He'll be on the field enough, and he's oh. got touchdowns in two of his last three games. He's 4K. Um, so Julio Jones, Peoples Jones, all these 4K. Let me just read to you some. So I, I love, we both like Wilson, right? Garrett Wilson, Peoples Jones mm-hmm. at 4,800, Julio Jones at 4K, not the most exciting one, but just throwing it out there. Um, Trayon Burks at 4,200. These guys all have ceilings and they're in the 4K range. We've been looking for value and there's some value out here. Um, not really all that interested. I If I'm going to play anybody uh, from the from the Cleveland side, it's going to be the passing game because Tampa Bay is still pretty good against the run. Um but I, 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 you know, you get the, you get it in Cleveland at home. I, I will take shots with Njoku, Peoples Jones, or or Cooper, but none of them priorities. Uh, Cooper being the least of the priorities, which kind of scares me to say because he's got the highest ceiling. But uh, sort of happy with what Peoples Jones has been doing, and uh, maybe may continue to ride that train. But definitely, definitely don't doesn't feel like game stacking at the moment. It feels weird that they're the the Patriots. Are, I'm sorry, the the Bucks are only. Uh, three and a half point favorites, even though I actually think that's probably the right number, but they throw the ball more than anybody does. And Tom Brady's 5,800. If you want, I'm not doing this stack, but if, if you want to, it's right there, right there for you to get a low owned stack of this game. And we've seen that Cleveland can put up numbers uh, on the other side. So it's a good mix for a good run back, but it's not, it's not my favorite. Yeah. We'll talk about these 4k guys, wide receivers. We'll, we'll get to some 3k guys later. Uh, this is a weird, this is yeah, a weird we, we slate. haven't had it all year and now we've got it. It's crazy. This is a weird slate. It is. Um all right, Atlanta, Washington. Um I go back to McLaurin. Why not? Um Atlanta. Uh not much of anything, really. Um Washington's stout. <laughs> They're tough. Uh so for me it would be McLaurin. I'm not I'm not messing with those running backs over on, in Washington. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, don't really know. I, 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 I don't, I don't feel like there's anything to do in this game. <laughs> like uh, both Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson are the usual cheap plays that they are every week. Uh, one of them has an excellent chance of getting there. I don't know how to pick which one you had the, 
sort of the reversal last week where well, Gibson had 18 carries. Um, actually, I think they both got a bunch of carries last week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Gibson had 18 to out, out, outran Robinson, who had 15. I, I don't mind Gibson, um, but I will just throw out again in the in the interest of talking about talented receivers that are underpriced. There's two in this game, one of them being uh, Drake London at 4,900, another 4K guy. And Terry McLaurin just is too good for this price point. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to, to, to do a little something with those guys, even though I don't love this game in general, I just think McLaurin at 5,800 is just kind of silly. Um, it, I think he's been better for him to have Dotson back because at least Dotson's a, another real threat on the outside and Samuel sort of, we know what he is, but I, I don't mind getting to, uh, to, to Terry McLaurin, who's, we know as a ceiling at 5,800. All right. Is that it for the morning games? Yeah, that, then know. you get in this, these afternoon games. We'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to a couple. I, I really think the pricing model broke after a while. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. it. All right. Uh, well, the Chargers, well. Chargers, Arizona, I mean, let's go, right? I mean, first of all, I I, I really hope that Kyler Murray plays. Um, but nonetheless, you got um, Connor was better this past week. I mean, he's healthy, finally. You have um, – Hopkins, who basically gets gets all the targets. Rondo Moore was was carted not carted off, but he was out of that last game quickly. He's, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with that, so we'll keep a look on that. Marquise Brown was going to be active last week, but they didn't. Um, but he might be this week, maybe. So that's something to watch. Uh, Greg Dorch had, you know, that was like one of the only things. Well, I did in that showdown slate because I played more to Craig Dortch in the field. He smashed at 3,300. Yep. Um, and even him is going on the MRI of his thumb. I mean, give me, it's brutal. Tough sport. Um, Tough sport is right. Uh, Robbie Anderson back where he belongs at 3,100 and <laughs> zero targets. Thank you. Um, the Chargers, I mean, Eckler certainly seems to be the kind of the alpha this week. I mean, against Arizona, uh, I regard him as one of the top, if not the top overall, you know, point getter on on the slate. Um, and you got to watch the uh, the injury report for the Chargers because Michael Williams didn't finish that last game. I uh, reaggravated an ankle injury. He says it's not significant, but I mean, it's enough to get him out of that game. Um, uh, Keenan Allen has Keenan Allen was good. He dropped one or he fumbled one, but he was overall good on a very limited, you know, snap count. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to, he, he could springboard off of that and have a really, really big game. So I like Keenan Allen and I like Eckler for the Chargers. And then we'll watch Michael Williams. And then if Michael Williams is out, then we'll go back to Palmer and all that stuff. And Arizona. Um, yeah, why not? Connor and, uh, and Hopkins. Yeah. Um, Hopkins is, is a given for me. I just, I just, suck it up and I'm going to play him every week. Um, the target share is just too crazy uh, for me to ignore. And I don't care who the quarterback is. I prefer Kyler because I think you have a little more upside, but I, I will be happy with, uh, with playing Hopkins here. Some um, if, if Robinson is out, I think we kind of have to play some Greg Dorch, <laughs> um, right? Like how do you just ignore what the guy just put up and, and against a good defense too? Like, at 3,100, that's it's hard not to think about that. And then right. Allen I mean, or Palmer, I would probably play one of them. Um, I don't mind a stack here, by the way, but uh, Palmer is Palmer has looked really good. And, and, and it's been consistently that he's getting work, even the weeks where he's not putting up fantasy points. It's not like they're not targeting him a lot. And I think he's sort of taken over a nice role here. So at 5,400, I think Palmer and Allen are both uh, p potentially too cheap for the matchup. I tell you, I feel this. I feel this like week one. There's going to be like multiple guys under 4K that that, that smash. I don't know. Yeah, I think you might be right. Um, but but those are the main ones for me, and I, I have no problem with playing Herbert with Palmer or Allen and or Allen, I should say, and Eckler. <laughs> um, and then you can run it back with uh, with Hopkins, uh, Hopkins and Dorcher that uh, two would stand out on the other side. Um, just doesn't feel like I want to play Colt McCoy. Just, I don't know what the ceiling is there. So 
that's the only thing. But I, I do have this game as one of my secondary uh, stacks. It was a target. You know, I, I guess I misspoke. I mean, I guess I guess there are games that kind of stand out. And I didn't real. I mean, I'm looking at this Seattle Las Vegas game. Isn't this just exactly the stuff that people were jamming in all year? I mean, you have Geno, Walker, Metcalf, Lockett, and then and then if if it's not if it's not enough to want to play Adams or Josh Jacobs on the other side, I mean, you could play Mac Collins and is another forty four hundred dollar guy. Um, so you could do that too. So yeah, I mean, I guess this is this again. I didn't look at any content, obviously yet. Well, mm-hmm. Obviously, but I any content this week is this the one that people are playing? I, this I, now that I'm staring at it, this is the one that I guess that makes the most sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it it certainly makes some sense. It's not like the ownership is anything crazy. Um, <laughs> Foster, but Foster Moreau, they throw him into the mix. Um, oh, too, right? right end option. Um, I, I personally, Devonte Adams is going nuts lately and I will continue to ride that when no one else is playing it. Um, Josh Jacobs is, is, is less of a priority for me. I don't really want the quarterbacks in this game. Um, <laughs> Kenneth Walker, I think is a tremendous play at 6,900. Uh, after the, they had a week off after London, after Munich, right? Or was that last week? I can't even remember. Um, I'll double check that, but, uh, I, I like Metcalf and I like Lockett. Um, so yeah, I think this is this is one. Um, I, I like the pieces more than I like the full stacks um, or Lockett. Uh, I just don't. I don't necessarily want to play these quarterbacks when I feel like I've got other quarterbacks that are either have more upside at a at a higher price or are. I mean, they're fine. They're both fine. I think Geno is going to be popular. I just I I would rather avoid the quarterbacks here and play the, the other plays in this game. Kenneth Walker, um, actually I think Walker and Metcalf, all the one of those three is 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 I can pretty much assure you will be in most of my lineups. I feel like um, whether it be Kenneth Walker or Metcalf or Lockett, and I don't think that's anything unusual. And then I just love Devonte Adams on the other side, so that's where I'm at. Okay, so here's here's a, a comment. Okay, the. the People better hope that Juju Smith Schuster plays, okay, and or Tony, whatever. Because if Juju Smith Schuster doesn't play, you have like probably the greatest wide receiver value in like the history of DraftKings. Like you have Sky Moore and Justin Watson at 3K. I don't even know which one I'd like to play. I think I want to play them both. And then MVS would be at 4K. I mean, you have those. Those would be the top three receivers, and you get all three of them for ten thousand um, dollars. Right. So, uh, I I also would like to add that if Schuster plays, I don't think it even matters. I, th- I think you want to play one of those guys. I mean, th- these are these are three K receivers who are going to get snaps with 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 Mahomes. You know, uh, I I think that I think that it's almost. It's criminal. These if you want to know the truth, and it, it turns out maybe they don't even play. I don't know. Maybe it's all Schuster and for whatever reason they like want Darius Tony. He stinks. You know, I don't know Darius Tony. No, they love him. Oh, I well, they love him, but they're gonna find out what the Giants found out, and he stinks. I don't want to hear it. Um, Wait, but you were the one who was on. I'm confused because you were on this. The Tony. I was. Just, I was just presuming that Kansas City was gonna was gonna figure it out when the Giants could. They did. Uh, okay, uh, but I don't think he's playing either way. Yeah. Listen, if any case, I, I'm going to have one of these two guys in, in, in some lineups between Watson and Sky Moore. And if you play the late slate, there's certainly no reason to not have these guys. In. Um, Schuster, uh, uh, I don't know about that. I, again, 5,700, though, is, is the top receiver for, for Mahomes. I don't care who they're playing. You know, um, th- that, that's that got to be cheap, too. So I think that that Mahomes and whatever receivers are active, I think are think are good plays. Um the Rams, you know, they've they're they're a bit of victim of circumstance to some degree, but the fact is that they, they, they now have no Cooper up Cooper Cup for a while. Not maybe not the whole season, right? Um right. The, the Rams the Rams at Kansas City have a 14 team total. I mean crazy. That's rough. Um but you know what? I'm I you want to try it? I mean, you want to take a shot at Allen Robinson or Vance Jefferson or Swarnak or something like that? I mean, no. listen, what are they, 10 point underdog? I mean, they're going to be have to throw. They're no, they're 14, they're, they're, I, think, I think it's uh, they're 15, 14 and a half. Yeah. I mean, so, well, listen, like it or not, they're going to be throwing. 
someone's got to catch the ball. And listen, the uh, I guess the obvious thing to do is just play just play Higby right at forty two hundred, but he hasn't yeah. gotten there since since the Eisenhower administration. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So maybe it was just 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 play the play the numbers and just hope that, that Robinson or Vance Jefferson falls into something because it's certainly cheap enough. Um, I just want to make sure is Stafford playing. I really don't want to play. No. No. Oh, God. He's he's he's, yet, he's he's wait. It says after going further testing, they have yet to place him in the concussions protocol. I can't imagine after the next concussion. He's had he's had what three this year. I mean, he just he could be in real like life trouble. Like if if he takes another one. So. But yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know. I I, th- I think I, I that's that's what I think. I, I listen. Obviously, Kelsey's always a good player, but but here's another guy who's showing up. No, he's not always really showing up. But there are guys from this roster I've never heard of. Who's who is this? This would be a showdown slate guy, Cornell Powell. But no, no, no. it's 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 Justin Watson, Sky Moore, MVS. Leave four thousand on the table in the Billy Mick. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> this is, that's why they call this an early look, I guess. No, but I, I'm. I, I mean, I, I all I have here is is with a big circle and a and a check mark is Chiefs receiver. Right. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, right, right. which includes Kelsey by the way too I mean sure. the problem is how do you get the ceiling out of them you kind of have to do it in a half basically because it's really hard to see how the Rams could possibly keep this one close it also feels tempting to take someone on the Rams because of the yeah the, the, the defense but I Higby's the best I can come up with I mean I don't know I mean I it would be Higby Van Jefferson or Skornick for for me but I don't really feel good about any of those um, I do, however, think that playing at least one Chiefs receiver, receiver if, if if Juju is somehow out, I think that playing one of those guys in like almost all your lineups is probably yeah. the way to go. Right, it's too much value to play with Mahomes. The, the The scary part is if it's like Marcus Kemp who comes out of nowhere and ends up being the guy because we know Mahomes can distribute it around. But somebody's getting double digit points and they three and four K and MVS has a twenty five plus ceiling um, with 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 all if all these guys are out, but. Uh, yeah, I think I mean I, I do just like the Chiefs receiving quarter that as a whole, and I and I and I would well, I would say even if Juju plays, he's probably the least interesting to me. But I don't I wouldn't cross him off either. And and the funny thing is 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 you know now now we're realizing by the way why you can get all this you can play these Waddle guys and, and these 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 Tyreek Hill guys and pay yeah. up for literally whatever you want on the slate. It's not like there's a running back even that's like that's like that's that expensive. Um, so. Going back, like with Tavius Murray, for example, you know, he's going to be a great play, but do you even do you even need to play him? You know, I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, and uh, and then we got one more, right? So yeah, we got we got a uh, could be could be an ugly one. Um, I mean, San Francisco, they're 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 putting the they're putting it to the league at this point. Uh, they're really making a nice run. Uh, they picked up McCaffrey, and uh, you know, and, and he's he's now fully fully entrenched. Um, they they got a healthy Debo. They got a they got Ayuk. They got Kittle back and and doing his thing, and Garoppolo just making as few as few mistakes as possible. Right? <laughs> uh, and their defense is really good. They are they're legitimately just as good of a candidate as any of those NFC East teams with that. That were that were like the, kind of the nuts for the Super Bowl recently, like, like the yep. Eagles and the Cowboys. I see no reason why San Francisco would not be ahead of them at this point. Um, uh, well, with that said, what do you do here? Um, yeah. uh, I guess McCaffrey. Okay. Well, why not? <laughs> you can you, you can get him. Um, I think he's fine. Uh, I'm not going to play Garoppolo or anything like that. You could play Kittle again at 5300. On the New Orleans side, am I getting to any Kamara? I mean, I don't, I don't want to like overhype San Francisco, but it's like kind of hard to to do much against them. I don't really have Kamara projecting all that well. Um, do you want? You could always take a shot at Olave, um, but McCaffrey, Kittle, Niners defense. I don't even know what their price is. I'm just like you know, I'm just talking. Yeah, um, they're expensive. Yeah, they're pretty. They're they're very expensive. Actually, they're four K. Um, but yeah, you you have any any anything bold in this game? Uh, I like Debo. Um, okay. 
they finally learned and raised the price on Ayuk. And, you know, my guy has been really good. Um, I like Debo. I like McCaffrey. And then my favorite play in this game is going to be sort of surprising. And I'm going to make a quick case. No one is paying attention to tight ends, I don't think. Juwan Johnson has has five touchdowns in his last five games. There is like no other tight end in football other than other than Kelsey who can say anything even close. And no one's going to play Juwan Johnson. I'll play Juwan Johnson. Um, so I play Juwan Johnson, and on the other side, I'll play one of Samuel um, or McCaffrey, and I think they're all really good plays. Uh, that's where I'm at. You know, so in terms of prioritizing early. Go ahead, Sheets. Oh, what I was going to say is is a quick 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 comment on defenses. Relevant to like survivor pool theory. So when we, when we think about survivor pool stuff in like the first couple of weeks, we think about what teams might look like in the future. And we always say that, that the farther out in the future, the harder it is to project, obviously. But if I told you at the beginning of this season that in the Chiefs Rams game, the Chiefs defense would be like 25% owned, like you'd like think I'm, I'm nuts. Right? 100%. Yep. But that's the, that's the reality this week. And, and not only that, it actually might be higher, first of all. And the other thing is that this, I mean, we're, we're not that far removed from these two teams playing the greatest regular season game in, right. in football history. That was my point. Yeah, exactly. So it's, yep. it feels really strange, but that's where we're at. And I just, just real quickly for my priorities, I do like the Seattle, like Walker, Metcalf or Lockett, or you could use two of those guys, uh, Walker and Metcalf, or you could use Metcalf and Lockett if you wanted to play Gino. I really like that. I like the Chiefs receivers. Um, I like the idea of playing one of Adams or Jacobs, preferably Adams. Um, I like uh, Garrett Wilson. I, I like Traylon Burks as more of a long, longer, larger field play, but I do like him. And all these cheap receivers are just standing out to me, which means that the Ecklers, the Derrick Henrys, the Christian McCaffreys are much more in play this week than I think they've been all season long. And doing yeah. a couple spend up at, at running back might be a good way to go. Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, if they hold back that Schuster news until after the one o'clock game start, that could be uh, that could be problematic. Um, yep. uh, but Latavius Murray is going to stand out as a good play, kind of in the abstract. But I, I reiterate my question: Is do you even need it? Right. Um, and uh, that's pretty much. I'm really glad that we did this because. I really didn't think there was going to be much in this slate, but as I just even talked through it, I haven't even run projections yet, really. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to do it, by the way, uh, until after the Thanksgiving Day games. I'm not going to run any projections for no other reason than yeah, that's I just wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know where to put it on the site. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so uh, I'll run them for the first time Friday, but we'll be there Sunday for the uh, for the whatever. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, good luck to everybody this week and uh, we'll have plenty of content. Jump in the discord and, and come join us. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff to the videos and uh, good luck. Hopefully uh, we see uh, some screenshots on Sunday.